Well, it feels a heck of a lot better this week than it did last week. And th why? I don't know. You're, you're going to tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that you had been paying attention long enough that, you know. Uh, less humidity. Any, okay. Yeah. Less humidity. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Two yeah. <laughs> points down. Yeah. There'll be Great. no. This is like having Chat GPT kind of doing <laughs> exactly. the whole next thing here. Like, <laughs> Let's talk about what's going. I'm focused now. Yeah. Okay. That's our money. All righty. <laughs> on the Max Track here, we have been watching a couple of showers, mainly across the south, as we've gone through this afternoon. Uh, we've been moving from northwest to southeast in a pattern we've seen several times here, and over the course of the next 24, 36 hours, more rain south and west than if you're going north and east. That's the overall setup. Got a cool August day in store for us tomorrow. A little bit of weekend heat, nothing over the top. So rain chances are going to be best again as you head south and west. Possibility of flooding rain is there and it's a slight risk of it. Uh, leading edge of that is Springfield to about Liberty to about Somerset to about Corbin and then across southern and southeast Kentucky. And you notice as you look up to the northeast, no, there's really no risk of that. Although there may be a few showers, but even not much of that as we are looking ahead for you. So what's going on here? Rainfall amounts again are going to be heaviest as you look toward the lakes. Whitley City, Williamsburg, Monticello look like over an inch of rain. Campbellsville over an inch, but again, lesser amounts as you begin to come to the north where say only about 30 oh, three tenths coming out of uh, Danville. But you see Barberville over an inch of rain potential. Same with Pineville, much less as you head toward Jackson and Salyersville, perhaps less than a tenth of an inch. Same idea as you look in the east. Rainfall amounts. A tenth, maybe two tenths of an inch, although as you head south toward Irvine, maybe closer to a half inch of rain. And finally, around the bluegrass, rainfall amounts are in that one, two, three tenths of an inch range, although a couple of heavier downpours still may ensue before all this is done. Where's the rain coming from? Well, first, we had one thunderstorm complex go through western Kentucky late last night. Then you've got another one that's beginning to form back here. This one's going to be a little bit more to the north and northeast of its previous one. They're kind of playing leapfrog here. There's your front. And what this front is, it is the boundary line between what is some incredible heat sitting out here as we look to temperatures that are around 100 in Oklahoma. Compare that to the other side of the front where temperatures are in the 70s. So it's that clash zone where these storms are able to just travel one after the other. It's a pattern that's repeated itself many times this summer season. By the pre-dawn hours, tomorrow could be a pretty good thunderstorm complex coming into the Lake Cumberland area. You can see how you get north of 64. You're really just kind of on the edge of all this with the really bulk of the rain going on from 64 and south. That'll carry us through the middle and latter parts of tomorrow morning. We get you into the afternoon. Rain becomes a little more sporadic for us once again, but the overall setup really doesn't change a whole lot as we go into Friday. So another thunderstorm complex potential as we roll into Friday morning. And again, those could have some locally decent downpours. But you notice how that axis is a little bit north and east of the previous one. But that may be the last one in that current sequence as by the time we get you to Saturday, things are looking better. Temperatures uh, where the clouds came in early. Temperatures are stuck in the 70s. Danville 76, Somerset 77. Same in Lawrenceburg where the sun's been out. 83 Moorhead, 82 in Maysville. Uh, 81 Georgetown, 77 Brandon. Oh, you notice Spindle Top here. We're going to talk about that in just a second. 81 right now at the Bluegrass Airport, and that is under a mostly cloudy sky. And that's also as warm as we have been all day today. For tonight, increasing clouds, not as cold. Overnight lows in the upper 60s. Storm chances increase in the hours after midnight. Your day tomorrow, mainly cloudy rain and, and storms more south and west than anywhere else. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s. As we look then through the rest of your eight day, scattered storms on Friday. Saturday at this point, looking dry and hot around 90, low 90s on Sunday. Storm chances return most of next week is looking pretty good. And had a chance earlier today to kind of sneak away from the weather center. And to, we're talking about the mezzanine. We show you these graphics every day, and they are vital to what they do. Well, today, the state's newest Kentucky mezzanine station, and it's located on Ironworks Pike at the University of Kentucky's North Farm. The Kentucky mezzanine provides us with real-time weather and soil data. It's critical for agriculture and management, transportation, and other things. But really, what it does best is it helps to save lives, giving you advance notice of a storm. Because it could save lives. Uh, we saw early warnings come out as a result of the measurements that were taken from that EF4 tornado that carved its way through Western Kentucky, uh, nearly missing one side in Graves County and moving right over another in Princeton. Early warning saved lives. Uh, that was uh, deployed in 10 cities across Europe. 
And I'll tell you what, as we look at what the Mesonet has provided for us, uh, it did provide the, the strongest wind gust ever recorded in Lexington. That was with the tornado that went through Graves County. It also provided us what looks to be the record rainfall for Kentucky. That occurred just last week out in western Kentucky as well. And live from Spindletop, right now it is 80 degrees on the north side of Fayette County with a heat index that comes in in the low 80s. So again, it's a great tool for us as we continue to forecast the weather for you.